Today is Wednesday, June 9th. We'll explain an intricate FBI sting that targeted organized crime all around the globe and ended with hundreds of suspects in custody. Also, how much America's billionaires are paying in taxes. A new report breaks down IRS files that have never been made public before now. Plus, new incentives companies are using to attract workers, what was behind a massive internet outage, and how farmers help scientists uncover one of the world's largest dinosaurs. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in about 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Lacey Evans, filling in for Erica Mandy during her maternity leave. You ready? Let's do this. More than 800 suspected criminals were taken down in an elaborate global sting. This week, the FBI explained how law enforcement pulled it off. For three years, the FBI has been running a secure messaging app called Anom with the help of police in other countries. It all started when the FBI recruited a former drug trafficker to become an informant. With that person's help, the FBI was able to distribute Anom to drug gangs and other criminal groups. And over time, word of mouth made it more and more popular in criminal circles. They've allegedly been using it to arrange international drug shipments, coordinate arms and explosives trafficking, order contract killings, and more. All the while, law enforcement officials were copied on every message. By the time Anam was taken down this week, authorities had collected more than 27 million messages from about 12,000 devices in more than 100 countries. Hundreds of people were arrested, mostly in the last couple days. Drugs, guns, cash, and cars were also seized. Also, some police say they prevented dozens of planned killings. And they've learned some of the methods criminal gangs have been using to get around the laws. Officials call it one of the largest and most sophisticated law enforcement operations of all time. The first congressional report on the Capitol invasion lists dozens of intelligence failures, miscommunications, and security lapses. A bipartisan group of senators put this report together after a series of oversight hearings. They also reviewed thousands of documents and written statements from 50 Capitol police officers. In the end, the report blamed the FBI and Homeland Security Department for not properly warning about potential violence targeting the Capitol. Remember, FBI agents did see threats on the Capitol in an online thread, but it only sent a warning about them to law enforcement agencies the night before, and many officials say they never saw it. The new report also laid out some recommendations. For example, for the Capitol Police chief to be able to call in the National Guard in an emergency instead of going up the chain of command. Congress would have to pass legislation to make that change, though. Other recommendations include better training for Capitol Police officers, a review of how intelligence agencies handle social media posts, and more. In response, both Homeland Security and Capitol Police officials say they're looking into the recommendations and other ways to improve. It's being called the most significant industrial policy legislation in decades, and it's getting bipartisan support in Congress. The Senate overwhelmingly passed a bill to boost government spending on technology, science, and research. It would cost nearly a quarter trillion dollars over the next five years. The idea is to help the U.S. better compete with new technologies out of China and other countries, and it would specifically set aside $2 billion for those semiconductor chips that have been in short supply recently. Supporters say it's necessary to protect critical supply chains and keep the U.S. a worldwide leader in innovation. But some critics are pushing back, saying the bill costs too much and interferes too much in the economy. Next up, the bill still needs to be approved in the House, where lawmakers have been considering maybe breaking the bill up into pieces or adding more to it. Either way, a vote is expected in the next month. If it passes, President Biden says he'll sign it into law. It turns out the 25 richest Americans have been paying just a small fraction of their wealth, if anything, in federal income taxes. The news organization ProPublica got hold of IRS tax data from 2014 to 2018 and published it this week. It showed income and tax payments from people like Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk, and Berkshire Hathaway CEO Warren Buffett. During those five years, they reportedly saw their wealth rise by more than $400 billion. But the article says they paid a true tax rate of only 3.4 percent on average. To put that into perspective, the median American household earned around $70,000 a year during that same time and paid about 14 percent of that in federal taxes. But the billionaires aren't doing anything illegal to get a lower rate. ProPublica explains it all comes down to legal loopholes. A lot of the time, their wealth is based on the rising value of stock and real estate, and that's not considered taxable unless their assets are sold. This information comes out at a time when President Biden is proposing overhauling the tax code so the richest Americans 
Americans and corporations pay more. But many Republicans have been fighting him on that, saying that would hurt the economy. By the way, the IRS, FBI, and others are now investigating how this all got released in the first place, since taxpayer information is supposed to be confidential. And there could be criminal penalties for IRS employees or others who release that kind of information. You might be able to travel to some international destination soon, even with the U.S. government's blessing. Remember, just about a month and a half ago, the State Department warned Americans not to travel to most of the world because of the COVID-19 pandemic still spreading internationally. Well, this week, it eased those travel advisories for dozens of countries. Canada, Mexico, Japan, France, Italy, and Spain were among those taken off the do not travel list. They're now listed in the reconsider travel category since there is still some risk. The State Department says it made this change to more closely align with the CDC's updated COVID-19 safety guidelines. To be clear, the CDC still says anyone who's traveling overseas should be fully vaccinated. More news is coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor. Here's your main host, Erica Mandy, to talk about BetterHelp. If there's anything stopping you from being and feeling like your best self, then why not give BetterHelp a try? You can talk to someone when and how you want, on your own time, at your own pace, and you choose whether you talk through text, chat, phone, or video. Of course, everything you share is confidential. There are counselors for everything you may need, including anxiety, family conflicts, grief, stress, and more. BetterHelp will assess your needs and then match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can start communicating in less than 24 hours, all without any offices or waiting rooms. And it's easy and free to change counselors anytime to make sure you get the right fit for you. If you've ever thought of giving this a try, now is the time because the Newsworthy listeners get 10% off your first month just by visiting betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. I want you to start living a happier life today. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. A huge internet outage affected people in dozens of countries around the world, including here in the U.S. Websites like Amazon, Reddit, eBay, Twitter, Hulu, PayPal, and several news outlets all went down for about an hour. It was all because of one outage at a cloud computing service called Fastly, which helps websites run faster. The company said it was a technical issue that caused the outage, not a cyber attack. It didn't go into more detail, but said the issue had been fixed. Still, experts say the glitch raises questions about whether it's smart to have a limited number of companies controlling such large swaths of the internet. Scientists discovered a new dinosaur species in Australia they're calling the Australotitan, and they say it's one of the largest ever identified worldwide. We're talking two stories tall and as long as a basketball court. Cattle farmers dug up the bones more than a decade ago, and paleontologists have been studying them ever since. Now they believe the dinosaur was walking around about 95 million years ago when Australia was still connected to Antarctica. It had a long neck and tail, sort of like a brontosaurus, and it ate plants. Researchers say the discovery suggests there could be many more dinosaur skeletons and possibly more species still left to be discovered. It's official, Chris Harrison is not coming back to the Bachelor franchise. The longtime host confirmed the news on social media yesterday. He wrote that his time with the franchise had been truly incredible and he is excited to start a new chapter. Harrison hosted the popular dating show and all of its spinoffs for nearly 20 years. As Deadline reports, Harrison is expected to receive a settlement worth millions of dollars. But ABC hasn't confirmed the exact terms of the deal. Remember, Harrison was sidelined back in February following a racism controversy. He faced backlash from critics and fans alike for how he defended a Bachelor contestant over photos of her attending an antebellum-themed party. Harrison later apologized for excusing her behavior, but the show is moving on without him anyway. The new season of The Bachelorette premiered Monday night. Former Bachelorettes Tasha Adams and Caitlin Bristow are hosting this season, and ABC is bringing on a series of celebrity guest hosts for the next season of Bachelor in Paradise. For the first time in its history, Maxim Magazine picked a black woman as the sexiest woman alive. It shows singer, actress, and director Tayana Taylor. She most recently starred alongside Eddie Murphy in the Coming to America sequel. Taylor's cover shoot was a little unusual, too. She says she raced to it after dropping her daughter at school. She was wearing sweatpants, an army jacket, and almost no makeup. And that's the outfit that appears on Maxim's cover. 
Taylor said she was surprised but thrilled when the photographer didn't want her to get glammed up. And she wrote on social media that she's honored to be chosen for, quote, literally living in the skin I'm in. Other women who made Maxim's list include Jennifer Lopez, Megan Thee Stallion, and professional fighter Mia Kang. And that's it for the main news today, but it's now time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story every Wednesday. But first, this episode is brought to you by FrameBridge. Here's Erica again to tell you about it. So I really recommend using FrameBridge for all your framing and gifting needs. I had such a great experience. I bought some digital photos for our new nursery, and then it was so easy to just upload them to FrameBridge and see those exact photos in dozens of different frame styles. I still couldn't decide, so I used their free service to work with a talented designer and get recommendations. I ultimately chose a frame that adds such a great pop of color to the room. And I loved that all three photos were delivered to my door, beautifully framed and ready to hang. Or if you need help creating the gallery wall of your dreams, you can work with the design team for that as well. And with Father's Day right around the corner, FrameBridge makes the perfect gift. Just upload your photo and order by Tuesday, June 15th to get guaranteed free delivery in time for Father's Day. Select gifts, ship next day. Order a custom gift for any dad in your life in just minutes by going to FrameBridge.com and using the promo code NEWSWORTHY to save an additional 15% off your first order. Go to FrameBridge.com with the promo code NEWSWORTHY. FrameBridge.com, promo code NEWSWORTHY. Thanks, Erica. Now back to Work Wednesday. For the first time in a generation, workers and job seekers are gaining an advantage over employers. The New York Times points out companies are becoming more willing to pay more, show more flexibility in where and how people work, and take chances on people who don't have traditional qualifications. In fact, the May Jobs Report found average hourly wages have risen faster than at any other time since the 80s, and the number of jobs with starting bonuses has doubled since a couple years ago. Also, a recent study found the number of job listings that say no experience necessary is up two-thirds over 2019 levels. This is all because businesses aren't getting enough candidates for open positions. The Labor Department released a new report this week that says there were more than 9 million job openings in the U.S. in April. And that's an all-time record. The most openings now are in the industries most hurt by pandemic lockdowns that have since been lifted, for example, at hotels and restaurants. As for why these jobs can't seem to be filled, economists blame a few factors, like a wave of early retirements, a lack of childcare options, COVID-19 fears, and enhanced unemployment benefits. These problems aren't expected to clear up until at least this fall. In the meantime, it's a job seekers market. Thank you for listening today, and thank you for continuing to share the show. Your kind reviews help us keep growing so we can keep providing you all the day's news. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 